I think natural gas more of like maybe something that's exhausted by like biofuels. I know it's naturally cleaner to use compared to other fossil fuels. From what I've seen, it looks to be more environmentally friendly. That's what they advertise it as. I maybe might have learned that it's like less um, like of a pollutant, but that also could be like misinformation. <laughs> it's a lot more tangible to see how oil can be more polluting. I think is natural gas better? I'm not sure, but yeah. People around the world seem to think of natural gas as a cleaner fuel alternative. But the fact is that the methane that's in natural gas is up to 80 times worse for the planet in the short term. Natural gas is still extracted from the earth. It can heat a building, it can cook your food, it can even make plastics. But the problem is every step of the way between when we get natural gas out of the ground to how we use it, can be toxic for both people and the planet. It really has been a marketing push to have this idea that fossil gas, termed natural gas, is cleaner, is not harmful, and is something that we can use as we try and progress to moving away from oil. And it's just a fallacy. It's just not true. Natural gas has long been marketed as a clean alternative to other fossil fuels like oil and coal. Since as early as 1988, the natural gas industry has referred to its product as a, quote, bridge fuel, a temporary, less harmful alternative as the world sought other, longer-lasting solutions to climate change. These phrases clicked with members of both political parties. I think the natural gas boom is good. It's an important bridge fuel. Natural gas should be a bridge to renewables. Focus on using natural gas as a bridge fuel. Bridge fuel. Bridge fuel. Bridge fuel. If extracted safely, it's the bridge fuel that can power our economy with less of the carbon pollution that causes climate change. Very early on, this idea of natural gas or gas being a bridge fuel came up because from a CO2 perspective, that would be the least amount of carbon dioxide when you burn a BTU or an amount of gas compared to coal or oil. That is a very myopic look at this issue. It is true that burning natural gas generates half the CO2 emissions as burning coal. But that does not take into account the CO2 emissions generated from transporting, processing, and extracting the fuel. There's a lot of CO2 that goes into what they call that upstream, what happens before you use it. It also fails to take into account another important greenhouse gas, methane. While it doesn't last as long in the atmosphere as CO2, it is much more potent in the short term. So if you think about carbon dioxide being one blanket around the climate. When you compare that to methane over its decade-long lifetime, it will be the equivalent of 80 blankets on the climate. So now you've stacked all these blankets. They won't live as long as CO2, but their impact now is far greater. Methane leaks all throughout the process of producing natural gas, which means it may not be cleaner than other fossil fuels after all. There are circumstances that make gas be as bad for the climate, as dirty for the climate as coal. I recently co-authored a study with colleagues from Harvard, from Duke, NASA, Jet Propulsion Lab, and RMI. We found that emissions of methane from the gas supply chain that were as low as 0.2% leakage, 0.2% leakage, could be on par with coal. Again, methane is 80 times more powerful than CO2 over a 20-year period. So even a low leakage rate, like 0.2%, can have an outsized climate impact in the short term. And there's growing evidence that gas today leaks much more than that threshold. Recent aerial and satellite surveys suggest that leakage rates range from 0.6%, at newer operations designed specifically to produce gas to 66% at older offshore oil and gas platforms in the Gulf of Mexico. So that's called into question whether gas is a safe bridge between where we are now and where we want to be. 
Despite these concerns, the industry is doubling down on natural gas, not just as a bridge to renewables, but the destination. According to a blog post by industry group American Petroleum Institute, executives were quoted as saying, it's not a bridge, but a foundation and will be a foundation for years to come. Natural gas is a foundation fuel for prosperity around the world. Natural gas is a foundational tool, not a transitional fuel. In 2022, a congressional investigation on fossil fuel disinformation revealed that, quote, despite public rhetoric that natural gas products are a bridge in transition to cleaner energy, major oil and gas companies are trying to position fossil fuels as long-term assets for many decades to come. In fact, BP even referred to natural gas as a destination fuel in several internal documents unearthed in the investigation. Yes. The fossil fuel industry has had success framing gas positively, not just in a political context, but also in a cultural one, especially when it comes to using gas in the home. What we're doing when we're using a gas stove is essentially combusting a fossil fuel right in the heart of our homes. We think of this as a normal thing to do. And why is that? And one of the reasons is because the gas industry has worked really hard to convince people, to persuade people, to love their gas stoves. The world of tomorrow is cooking with gas. Gas cook! It heats automatically. Why not have in your own kitchen the same fast, cool, clean, controlled gas cooking that fine chefs insist on? It has been a campaign, including celebrities and even sports. Records show that the gas industry has spent millions of dollars on advertising and marketing campaigns through product placement deals, through celebrity tie-ins, to convince people and to persuade people to cook on gas. For example, even Julia Child, America's favorite TV chef in the 1970s, at the end of every show was the message saying, with special thanks, to the American Gas Association. But also it used a sports stars to promote its message. A Southern California gas company actually provided the gas for the Olympic flame for the 1984 Olympic Games. But in the 1970s and early 80s, a growing body of scientific evidence emerged showing links between gas stove emissions and respiratory illness some gaining national attention and prompting calls for regulation. And in response, the gas industry started funding its own epidemiological studies. A report by the Climate Investigation Center suggests that the gas industry borrowed Big Tobacco's tactics to manufacture and magnify controversy over links between gas stove emissions and respiratory illness. And that it did this using the same laboratories, the same consultants, and the same statistical analysts as its tobacco counterparts. The industry is still fighting over the public perception of gas stoves today, as more scientific research has emerged on their potential negative health impacts. We see like paid Instagram partnerships with influencers today who are cooking with gas and have many, many followers following their recipes, their lifestyle, uh, continuing to perpetuate this image of a gas stove as something desirable. There are controversies over the health impacts of natural gas far beyond the kitchen, such as environmental justice concerns along the supply chain, including at power plants that generate electricity from natural gas. But at Ravenswood Generating Station in Queens, New York, environmentalists and public health advocates scored a recent victory. There are plans to convert this from being a fossil gas burning to being a clean energy hub. It's a change that could help solve long-standing health and environmental justice concerns associated with the plant, which is located across the street from a large public housing complex. Advocates hope that the plant's transition plans can offer a blueprint for other cities and states that want to move towards renewables. So that's just one example of you know, something that's actually underway as we speak. New York City has dug in and we know that we can do this. But achieving that transition elsewhere won't be easy the work of changing the trajectory of harm, you know, that our fossil fuel infrastructure 
you know, is causing both our people and planet is a challenge. I think what's happening right here is, is one example of this. This idea that we can replace one of the biggest generating plants that's burning gas into clean and renewable energy. This didn't happen overnight. And a lot of things do need to come together. The commitment to making the change is what is necessary and the political will and pushing back against the interests that really have a lot invested in the status quo.